section of this for immediate release and then we will move into an embargoed section for the written press for tomorrow's papers. Um, so if you've got a question that you want embargoed until um, tomorrow, then please wait until I've announced that we're moving into that section. Fabulous. Bear with me one second. Let me check. I can see all the hands. I would personally like to start, if I can, with TV, but I don't see any hands there. I'm looking at Jess. Jess, can we start with you? Start with me then, shall we, uh, Sharon yes. Wendy? Yes, yes Sky Sports News, thank you. Lovely. Uh, afternoon, Heger. you okay? Good afternoon. Thank you. Good, good to see you again. Um, thank you for the squad announcement. Uh, just explain the reasons, firstly, for bringing back Carly Telford and, and Karen Barnsley, the two goalkeepers. Like in, fe in February, uh, for me, it was important to see all the talented uh, young goalkeepers coming up. Um, now, this camp, we have two games. Uh, and for me to see the experienced player as well, you know, in the Olympics, uh, it will be tight. Uh, and the experience is also important. So this is for Carly and Karen to see, to show uh, their experience coming into camp again. Okay. And um, a first call up for Neve Charles as well. What, what struck you about her? What, what made you want to bring her into the camp? I see the talent, uh, the physicality that she has shown now growing into the game uh, due to injury in Chelsea. She, she came on in the Champions League game played uh, more and more minutes in those games. Uh, and I'm excited to see growing into that uh, game. So to bring her in, to, to see her in our environment was important for me. Um, how difficult, I think, it, you know, we're going to be talking about this a lot over the next few weeks, but how difficult will it be now to look at these players and, and have to condense the squad even further than you already have um, to, to 18 for the Olympics. Yeah, like the, there will be ongoing discussions to, to pick the players for uh, the GB uh, Olympics. Uh, and, uh, but seeing them in this camp helped me make decisions, but it's still going to be very hard uh, to have the final squad of 18 plus the four coming as well. And how are things progressing looking at other players uh, outside of the England camp to join the GB squad? Are you still in contact with those players? Are you still able to watch those players? Yeah, we, we follow uh, every player that we can. And like the support uh, I have with coaches that are going to games and, and see wider player with the home nation so I feel like we are uh, have a good view of the player all of them and I wondered whether you had any uh, follow-up comment to make about the way that some of the players were found out uh, about whether they were included or not in the team GB squad yeah that was that the timing was uh, uh, not my call, but it was not how we want to work. So that was a big uh, mistake of us. And as soon as we found out, I called uh, both the coaches and and Hannah, uh, of course, just to apologize the process uh, of that. So that was a mistake that we don't want to happen again. Of course. Um, and looking ahead to uh, a big match, I suppose you can call it, against France, um, a team with so much experience, third in the world. What are you looking for from these players to, to be able to be successful in this match? Uh, the, the, what we're aiming for is to have a good performance, to win both games against the Tier 2, Tier 1 uh, opponent. And, and meeting France is the probably the best we can right now meet up and see after that game we can go back in and see what we need to go further with um, 
So the liver and the pressure will be a key because many players know that they play for a <laughs> Olympic spot as well. We can hide that because that's the reality. So that will be uh, for us to perform well as a team uh, against uh, a good opponent. Yeah, you, you mentioned the pressure there. Do you, do you get the sense that the players feel that pressure? Do you get the sense that they're trying to impress you so that they can obviously make it to, into Team GB? Like, uh, the pressure will always be there when you you coming closer to make a squad. and But that's the reality that they live under. And what they do every day is, is important uh, for the club. So it's, it's more for us to pick, see through the get, through that games, uh, who can who coming into uh, uh, the camp and also there perform uh, well. Thanks, Ega. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jess. Could we go next to Alistair McGowan for the BBC, please? Hi, Ega. Hi. I I just wondered. Um, Obviously, you're missing uh, Steph Horton through injury. And I'm, I'm right in thinking that Nikita Paris is um, because Leon couldn't let her go. Um, can you explain how hard it will be to deal with those without those two players? There will always be players that cannot come in, like due to injury, due to things that we can control. And I feel like that's an opportunity for others to step up and show that they want to be a part of this. Uh, of course, Steph uh, has been captain for how many years? And uh, of course, a major player for a long time. Um, we cannot uh, replace her, but it's an opportunity for a younger uh, player to step up. And that's what we are looking for now. In terms of Nikita, we... we uh, she didn't come in for February, so hopefully we can look later uh, in the camp that she can join, come in for the last part, but we don't know. So that's that's the world we are living in right now. Uh, not only injury, but uh, other things that can uh, be challenging as well. I just wondered about Nikita. Obviously, you're playing France in France. She's in France. So she could she have not come to that game? Uh, I don't know all the details in there. So that will, that will, I need to hold back on my answer that okay. until um, we know no more. Um, one of the things you met, uh, the other thing was um, uh, Beth Mead is back in the squad. Uh, I think last time around you said her her player report wasn't good. Is her player report better this time? It is. And uh, also that we have seen her in the camp. She came in late for uh, the last camp when we had some injuries. And she was good. And, uh, and that's why we are giving her another opportunity to come in. And she also played many league games between these camps as well. And another player I wanted to ask you about was um, Lauren James at Manchester United. Um, she's been sort of winning good reviews this season. Is, is she close to being in the squad? Why didn't you choose her this time? Uh, due to injury, um, playing time, and of course, uh, there's internal discussions around that that I can't uh, talk about but she's a player that we follow yeah so she's on your radar then <laughs> yes as it were and just last of all can I just ask you about um playing in France what sort of challenges will there be playing abroad for your team uh the, it will be a good experience for us to travel uh we only travel the day before uh so that will be uh like almost like we do in, in uh, Olympics as well, short time between. So it will be a good uh, test for us how we respond to that. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Alistair. Could I go next to Asif Buren for Forbes, please? 
Hi again, Alistair just asked one of the questions, but um, another one was in, you, you've not included Nikita Paris due to the isolation of the Lyon squad, but four of the French squad have actually tested positive for COVID-19. So have you had any indication that their match actually could be in danger of not taking place? Well, that, that will be a concern. We uh, still don't know, but our plan, hopefully, we want that game, but we don't want to risk anything. Uh, but our plan is to go to France and play, uh, and we haven't heard any different. Okay, thanks, Hega. Best of luck. Thank you, Asif. Can I go to Sophie next for Girls on the Ball, please? Hi, Hega. Um, just a quick couple. Uh, you, the, the Lionesses haven't travelled abroad since March 2020. Um, it, this is going to be the first time. Do you feel, you, uh, whereas other teams have been able to because of the qualifiers or, or whatever. Do you feel you need to have an extra level of preparation over the next 10 days to get them, you know, just prepared for that, that difference? I don't, I don't think so. We, we travel into uh, SGP and prepare uh, there for a few days. And then we just fly out for, for the game. And I feel like we don't want to do anything different. We just try to replicate what's coming and then don't uh, pay too much attention to, to the changes. Just this is how it's going to be <laughs> and, and leading into the camp. So, yeah. And um, thank you. And just a quick question on Fran Kirby. She's obviously... Um, played deeper for England in the past and than she does for Chelsea, where she operates fantastically, especially this season. You've seen what she's able to do. Where do you see her position within this England side? I think she has the versatility that she can play a different position. Uh, obviously, her performing for Chelsea now has been awesome and uh, and really helped Chelsea to, to be at the place they are now. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sophie. Could I go next to uh, Dom Smith, please, for englandfootball.org. Thanks. Hi, Heger. Um, I think I'm right in saying that 20 of the 24 players um, that you've called up this time belong to either Man City, Arsenal or Chelsea. I mean, how much of a compliment is that to those three clubs, the quality of players that they've got and the quality of football that they play? Um, I would say they are doing a great job now. Uh, also playing in the Champions League, give they the international experience for young players uh, in that. And uh, they are used to the level of play and can easily adapt to uh, the international level uh, also. Uh, and do you expect um, friendlies against France and, and Canada to teach you a bit more about your team than the game against Northern Ireland? Because perhaps these two teams are more evenly matched with yourselves? Of course. And, and these are the teams or the level uh, that we will meet in the uh, Olympics. So this will be two great games for us. And of course, excited to finally have uh, a tier one op opponent as well. So uh, starting with Northern Ireland, they gave us uh, a good uh, competition. And it was good for us to start. And now leading into the Olympics and closer, then we get the tier one opponent to play. Perfect. Thanks. Best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you, Tom. Um, I'll move into the embargoed section um, in about five minutes time. So just to double check that everyone who currently has their hand up is happy for this to be for immediate release. Uh, I'll go next to... Sorry, I'm just having some trouble seeing the hands. Bear with me. I think I think I might have frozen. Okay, I've got them. Sorry. I'll go to Alex um, Ibaceta, please, for Vavil. Thank you. Hi, Hege. Just a, a quick one from, one from me. Um, when, it, when it comes to, to nailing down between two players, for example, would you prioritize versatility over maybe the player report, for example? Uh, good question. We have like a few key points that we uh, look into, but it's not that all players should have all three of them. So it will be a mix. 
And it's also uh, for me to kind of build a good team that lead in. And it, it, uh, we look at all the players report, we look at the behavior, we look at uh, delivering under pressure. So it's different criteria and some might come in for 20 minutes and be the success in the Olympics. So that's the dis- ongoing discussions uh, that we do with all the, all the players selections. And a quick follow-up on that one. When you have these that situation where you have to pick between one, or, one player or the other, what's the main priority that you're looking for in that? Depending how the rest of the squad looks like. So it's not obvious answer. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's fair. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Could I go to Dan Pentland next, please, for WSL Full Time Magazine? Thanks, Wendy. Hiya, Hege. Hope you're well. Hi. Um, Georgia Stanway is a player that we know can play in a lot of different positions and she played in a, an unfamiliar um, defensive midfield role against Northern Ireland. Um, yeah. Do you kind of tinker with different positions you know, in, in the upcoming two games um, to see, or do you have one position in mind for her? Uh, I, will, I, will go, I cannot go into detail because we are still planning how we're going to look against France, how we're going to look against Canada and build the training and everything. So uh, in February, uh, when um, Kiera had to step out, uh, Georgia <laughs> stepped in in that position. So it might be different uh, uh, going into this France game as well and Canada game. So we have two games to kind of get everything we need to see in place. Thanks, Eka. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. And last one before we go to the embargo section, Tom Dean from the FA, please. Hi, Tom. Thanks, Wendy. Hi, Eka. Hi. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to, to quickly revisit um, Neve Charles. Lots of fans will be really pleased to see her included. Um, what is it that, that you've liked um, about seeing her play? Uh, now I've seen her is a number two position. Um, and she can also play a seven or a three position. So, but what's impressed me when I see her in the Champions League game, the physicality that she has, she can go up and down the field. Um, you can see that she's still young, uh, not mature in some of her play, uh, but she's growing into those games. I saw the Wolfsburg game. Uh, I saw her raise the level from the Atletico game into the Wolfsburg game. So she's on a good spot now uh, with her club and also delivering uh, on the field. Cool. Uh, and just from a, from a player's perspective, um, how difficult is it to um, play out of position or, or, or learn a new position when, when you've not necessarily been used to playing there? Well, that, that's for us to be as clear as possible and, and to do some uh, in training to, to look into that. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. And I've just heard that Phil Medlicott for PA can't raise a digital hand. So, Phil, before we go into the embargoed section, um, please. Hi, Hager. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to ask about um, Ebony Salmon uh, not making the squad. What was, what was the thinking there? Is she still in the running uh, for the summer or not making this squad? Would that suggest that she isn't anymore? Well, she, she came in as a young player. Uh, uh, and for us to see her in that environment gave us a good uh, look at her. She will be a part of this England team uh, going forward. Uh, might not be for the Olympics, but going further, she will she will grow into the game uh, more. And it was good for us to have young young players coming in, kind of see them in that environment, see the level they have, what they need to develop, and then for them to go to the club and and work more closely with the coaches and everything going forward. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Phil. Okay.